I want to minister this morning a message that's entitled uh, Pathway to Promotion. And many times we think that just our abilities and talents and skills will give us a promotion in the kingdom of God. But in fact, that may be only half of it. There is another piece, and that is God himself will decide when we're promoted. It's very frustrating to people who want to get ahead and become significant and they've got a plan for their life and then there's this person named God who wants to organize and walk with them. And so it's a pathway to promotion. How God deals in each of our lives. And that would be individually and collectively. I want you to turn in your Bibles to 2 Samuel chapter 5, and uh, I've been ministering out of this particular portion of Scripture on the presence of God. I always like it when people are attending church week after week after week because then you're able to follow and have a continuum or a train of thought. But I'll just give you the, the essence and the sense of where we're at here in Second Samuel chapter 5. Again, this relates to promotion, and that is really when we speak of promotion, being all that God has intended us to be. That's what we want to be promoted to, all of what God has for your life and mine. In 2 Samuel chapter 5, David is becoming king over all of Israel. The last place that he's about to conquer is going to be the base or the hub for his kingdom. In verse 5 of 2 Samuel chapter 5, it says that his base used to be in a city called Hebron, but it was too far south now. David had grown and now he needed something located differently, more in the center of what would be known as Israel. What we talked about in a previous week was the fascinating reality that hundreds of years prior, and this is about 1000 BC here, so hundreds of years prior, Abraham in Genesis chapter 14 met a king of Salem or Jebus. Abraham and King Melchizedek meet, and the place of their meeting that they sanctify with honoring one another, blessing and giving and eating together, is going to become this place that David will have as his new base and hub. I want to say this, because there are just a couple of important points, and I'll make them just so clear for us. One of them is, there is a pathway to promotion that I want to make very clear of what it is, and I've already shared what it isn't. We all want to do our best, and so we need to develop our skills and talents and all of that. But we want to talk about the pathway to promotion, and then I want to talk about your base. Because the area of conflict that the enemy will have with you will never be the fruit but it will be your root or your base. It's where you're planted. That is the place that the enemy will attack. And there are reasons for that. And so the pathway when we begin in Genesis chapter 14, this particular place, if you follow this in verse 6, the story begins at Jebus, Genesis chapter 14. Then it speaks in verse 6 of Jerusalem. So this particular place goes from being called Jebus to Jerusalem. And then the scripture continues and it, it tells us, if I'm just turning over the page here, it tells us in verse 7 that David goes to what's called the stronghold of Zion. So we go from Jebus to Jerusalem to Zion. It's the same place. It's the continuum or the story that God is weaving. Finally, it's called the city of David. 
The reason that it's called the city of David, which you could think, well, David's just full of himself. He names the city after him. Is this story really is less about a city, and it's God taking you from a place back there and weaving your pathway to promotion to a place that God's given, and he wants you to function there, and it's all about him, but he says that's where you belong. That's why you can call it now the city of David. This is the place where you're going to minister and rule and reign in the kingdom. And so you go from Jebus with the Jebusites, a place called Jerusalem. Finally, and by the way, this is the first time that the word is ever used here. The, the other scriptures will tell us that in heaven there, there is this heavenly Mount Zion. And so it had to have been some kind of revelation, supernatural understanding that, that David has that it's, it's now to be called this place that he's going to take. It's called Zion. And when he calls it Zion, he says, yeah, also I want to call it the city of David. This is now going to be my base. It's all about your base. I was thinking about this message in very practical terms of what the base is for my life. The base of my life is my spirit man. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. Speak of the God of peace wholly setting us apart in our spirit, soul, and body. I'm not just a body. Neither am I just mind and emotions and making decisions. People who don't know Jesus live that way. They just do what they want. But the base of my life is my spirit man. The place of attack is to get at my spirit, my base. The place of attack that David was going to experience is there were enemies at this last place that would be called Zion or the city of David. You will always find at your base the root, the place that you're to bear fruit from and to extend from is the place that the enemy will go after. Anyone and everyone knows that the attack today is on the base of civilization, which is family. It's a father and a mother and children and a dog and a cat. Something like that. But that's the basis of family. You say, well, you know, why is it at this particular time in history they're trying to redefine family? Because that's the base, the structure of order. That's why. It's, it's something that goes way deeper than politicism or ideologies, but it's an attack against the base because you have a family. In the same way, churches, many churches are closing down. I could depress you with, with the stats on, on churches. It's an attack against the base. God says, a church, and that's the base. It's the place that you go out from. It's our, our center system. We would go out from the base and you come back. The fruit out there isn't the place of attack. The attack is at the base. David was going to experience firsthand in kingdom living that until he secured the base, he had been king over Hebron, he had been uh, uh, conquering some armies, and all of that was great. But this is where the rubber meets the road. For those who are culturally listening, now they're live streaming or in, in the auditorium here. I'm talking about this is going to be the place of contact. If you don't win here, you don't win at all. It's just that simple. David comes, and it's here in 2 Samuel chapter 5. He says, I'm going to move my base from Hebron to Jerusalem. Verse 6, and the king and his men went to Jerusalem against the Jebusites. These were people who were to be kicked out of the promised land when Joshua first went in. And uh, Joshua and his armies and subsequent armies came against these different people. You know, they were called the Hivites and the Gergesites and uh, the Hittites and the Amorites. 
All of these ites, they're mentioned, there are seven of them that are mentioned in Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 1. And as they're mentioned there, each of them will have an evil or sinister or corrupt aspect to them. All of them were defeated at this particular time except one. And this particular group, the Jebusites, were on the very place that David was to have as his base. Coincidence? Not at all. Not at all. You say, well, why doesn't God just carpet bomb them? Because God doesn't do that. God says, I'm going to do something far more, far more sophisticated than that. I'm going to use you to be an overcomer and to attack the Jebusites, the people who are enemies of the kingdom, attack them, defeat them, so that you can establish your base and you can extend from there. Well, Jebusite means to trample upon. You see, you can't coexist with those who trample upon you. It'll wear you out. We're speaking figurative language here, by the way. It's Jebusites trampling on the things of God, treating them indifferently. They have another plan. They have other values. David says, I've come this far. I've got to conquer the Jebusites. God says, that's right. I'm not going to do it for you. You give yourself, and I'll use my supernatural power to defeat the enemy. It's not how strong you are. It's whether you'll offer yourself to defeat the enemy within you. This is what we're going to discover. The Jebusites really, for our context this morning, are not out there. They're in here. And what God says is, I want you to overcome and establish my kingdom. And so David says this. It's in the scriptures. There's another place where it's mentioned as well in 1 Chronicles chapter 11. But the scripture says here that the people, the Jebusites, who are on this very place that would be called Jerusalem, it would be called Zion, it would be called the city of David. If you've been to Jerusalem, it's on the southeastern part of the hill of, of Jerusalem. It's a specific area. Jews today would call it the citadel of David. David looks up there. It's a sheer cliff. It's, it's very strategic. At the very base of it is a water supply called the Gihon Springs. It, it's, there aren't any lakes in Jerusalem. There aren't any rivers. This is why this area is so important. It offers security. It offers water. You can come against the enemy. All of that. It, it's almost impossible, though, to get at these Jebusites. So King David says this, whoever, here, I'll, I'll read it for us as well. Verse 8, now David said on that day, whoever climbs up by way of the water shaft and defeats the Jebusites, he shall be chief and captain. In other words, there's reward for defeating the Jebusites. You can put your tail between your legs and run off, or you can defeat the Jebusites. Scripture is saying here that David's offering a reward. In other words, you're going to have to be courageous. Find a way to somehow get to where the Jebusites are at the top of their hill there. And by the way, the Hebrew word for hill, H-A-R, har, or mountain, is the same word for promotion. Your pathway to the top is not with an elevator. It's not with an escalator. It's not by purchasing a ticket. It's find a way to get to the top and defeat the Jebusites. And if you do, you will have secured your base that I have planned on for hundreds of years. But you've got to take it. It's not going to freely be given to you. You're going to have to fight for it. And so there's this fellow, his name is Joab. He decides that he is going to go up there and take on the Jebusites. 
History and archaeology of recent years bears out that this is exactly how it happened. In fact, there was a man in 1867 named Warren, and he discovered a shaft at the bottom of this Mount Zion where the Gihon Springs are that went 40 feet up, straight up, a vertical climb, a tunnel, a shaft, if you will, that seems to be the place where Joab climbed up, scaling the walls in the dark, water falling on top of him, pushing and squeezing and trying to get to the top. And it appears that he risked his life. At one point, they say there was water up to his shoulders. And he got to the top, opened the gates of this city that the Jebusites had, and allowed David's men to come and conquer the Jebusites. Now, what's so interesting is this. The word that's used for water shaft in verse 8 is also rendered as sword or dagger. Words can be used in different ways. It means a sword or a dagger. In other words, the water shaft that he went up was a tunnel. It was like a capsule. But it was also a sword, a dagger. Someone would have to risk their life to go up the water shaft to take on the Jebusites. Now, several weeks ago, October 2nd and 3rd was the Jewish New Year, Rosh Hashanah, October 2nd and 3rd. The Jewish New Year is how long the Jews believe We've been around, it's 5,777 years, so it's called 5777, that's it. The last two letters, or, or numbers, 7-7, seven, seven, are in the shape of a, what I would call a T, a cross on the top, and then this vertical line going down. This particular letter is called Zion. Zion, not Zion as Z-I-O-N, but Z-A-H-I-N, Zion, Z-Y-I-N. It's that seventh letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It literally means a sword. That's what it means. In other words, we've entered into a season, if you go by the Jewish calendar, God's well aware of the... Uh, Gregorian or the Roman calendar, he's aware of that. But you look all through Scripture from Genesis to Revelation, you'll see that God understands his Jewish calendar real well. Even in the New Testament, you'll see the coming of the Lord relating to certain feast days and all of that. It's, it's all there. So we've entered into the clashing of the swords. And what it means is the kingdom conflict of light and darkness. Scripture tells us that's how the age is going to end. It's not going to get better and better and better and better until finally we say, it's so good now, Lord, it's heaven on earth. No, Scripture says there, tremendous harvest and revival and move of God will happen prior to the coming of Christ, but there will be a clash of the kingdoms where darkness will get darker and brightness will get brighter and they'll clash. Here's what I want to say to us very briefly as it relates to this. The only way to tackle the enemy is to climb up the water shaft and let the dagger and the sword touch your life. That's the only way. In Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12, Scripture tells us that those who are in the kingdom are, uh, are going to experience violence and the violent take it by force. So it's really interesting Scripture. And, and, and people love that verse because, you know, it's, it's kind of go crazy, man. Go against the enemy and you can do it. And let's all just jump and do it. In actual fact, Jesus pretty much did it all. I shouldn't even say pretty much. I'm, I'm being a little facetious. He did it all on the cross. There's nothing that I can do or you can do to add to it except receive it and walk it out. So... What does this mean then when it says that there is a violence that we experience in kingdom living and the violent take it by force? What does that mean? 
it means that we have to allow the sword of the Lord to come to our own lives. That's what it means. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12 says this, that the word of God is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and is a discerner of our, the intents of our hearts. The word of the Lord has to be able to come into our lives. The sword has to turn. You say, but I, I'm ready to go out and take the enemy. Well, you don't have to go out. You can just stand right there and take the enemy. The enemy built a Trojan horse in your life and mine. And until you establish your base, until we establish the base of God's kingdom living, if we allow the Jebusites to coexist, they'll just trample what's being done. And so there has to be a definitive victory. Somebody has to go up the water shaft. Somebody has to be exposed to the sword of the Lord. I don't know what Joab looked like when he had crawled up there. You know, he could have been bleeding from head to toe. But King David, when he saw him after, said, you're now the captain of all my armies. This is what God wants to do in your life and mine. Scripture says in 2 uh, Samuel chapter 5, verse 9, Then David dwelt in the stronghold. They had conquered the Jebusites. Verse 10, this is a turning point. So David went on and became great, and the Lord of hosts was with him. Until the base is established, you cannot expand. Until the base of your life is established in the spirit realm. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 says, He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. It's functioning out of the initiation of God's spirit in your life. You can have a thousand great ideas, but to be established in the Lord... And to have a base of spirit living is to receive what God's giving and your soul and your body respond accordingly. What God wants to do is to establish you. He wants to establish me. He wants to establish us. He wants to establish our country at its base. There are basics. The very essence of base is basics. We're not talking about some kind of complicated, convoluted complexities. We're not talking about that. The base is where the basics are. And it's this. Are you willing to give up your life? To surrender yourself? Jesus spoke about it. He said, if any man is willing to do his will... He needs to deny himself daily, take up his cross, and follow him. It's dying to self. It's, it's not the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the poor life and all, all these terrible things that have to happen to you. It's the best life ever because we're freed, we're delivered from ourselves of trampling upon ourselves. <clears throat> it's to be freed from that. In that list of the ites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Gergesites, the, all the ites, the parasites, they're all there. To be freed from all of them, there are seven of them. Seven is, is, is a Hebraic way of saying there's a fullness of enemies. And you take that, take that, take that, take that. This 5777 is all about the clashing of the sword. The clashing of the sword. It's kingdom conflict. I don't pick battles. If I see a dog sleeping, number one is I like to see a sleeping dog. So I'm, my heart's kind of there. But if I see a dog that's mean and grumpy and hungry and sleeping, I am not going to take a stick and poke him. So I'm not saying go out and start a fight with the enemy. What I am saying is this. You must, though... Establish your base without any compromise. 
It's establishing yourself in the, the basics of God's word. It's the only way that we can discern right from wrong, good from bad, all of that, is to be established in that way, definitively, absolutely. This is what it is. When we take on the Jebusites, it's a battle that's already been won at the cross. All you have to do, and I have to do, is be willing to scale that water shaft. Allow the sword to come to our lives. Allow the Word of God to search our hearts so that when we get to the top, David says, now, now, we've gone from Jebus of hundreds and hundreds, probably a thousand years prior, We've gone from Jebus to Jerusalem to Zion to the city of David. The city of David and Zion, I just want to paint this picture so that we see it, actually is just a hill on the southeastern side of the whole hill that Jerusalem would be on today. It was the beachhead. It was the place where the Jebusites were. They know. They know where to be. We would call it, that's my hot button. You're pushing my buttons. That's the only thing. It's just that. That's the only thing I struggle with. Listen, it's, that's where they are. And it's you trample them or they'll trample you. Fall on the rock or the rock will fall on you. But when you take that place... Just up from there, if you were to go north, is where the temple is built. It's called the Temple Mount. It was put on Mount Moriah. Jerusalem, forever. Even, even the heavenly city that we'll spend eternity in is called the New Jerusalem. These aren't passing fads. They're names that are listed. Zion, Jerusalem. There are things that have to be conquered what God says on the earth for Israel, for Jerusalem even, as a whole temple mount, Zion must be taken. David, you need to get to the top and defeat the Jebusites. Joab was the one who said, I'm going up, I'll find a way. And I'll open the gate so that others can go in and pillage the enemy too. David says, I no longer call this Jebus, Jerusalem, or Zion. I call it the city of David. You see, there is a place where you're to live and move and have your being and to do things for God. It should have your name on it. It's, it's, it's what you do. It's what you do. You say, but I, you know, I... I, I I can't be the, you know, the, the king of a nation. Uh, maybe David's the only one. That's fine. We're not trying to be David. It's to be able to have the city of your name and to say, Lord, do your work. Let's stand together, please. This may be the only crowd in the Durham region this morning that is clapping for our own death. <laughs> the most beautiful one. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but it's Christ who lives in me. In the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Gave his life for me. This is what we're talking about. This is what God wants to do for you and for me. It's what he wants to do for embassy. It's establishing his base. It's what he wants to do in your life. In my life. Establish the base. It's what he wants to do in your home. It's what he wants to do in your, your business. It's what he wants to do in, in all that you do. 
Pastor Leon's been talking about Jesus is the source. Jesus is the center. It's establishing the base, the center, the source. And then we go out from there. We weren't designed just to live in here. We were designed to come and go. Come and go. The clashing of the swords. The clashing of the swords. There's never a sword fight that the enemy or the Lord will send you into that the enemy isn't already defeated. Already defeated. There are lots of things that in the Lord God can use me to give you or vice versa. God can use you to give me. But there's one thing I cannot give you. That's experience. I can't give you my experience. I can't give you my walk. You're going to have to walk that one yourself. There are people who decide which way they're going, which direction. Will you go up the water shaft or do you want to find another way? I want to point the way of the sword, the dagger, the water shaft. Get to the top and name the city after yourself. Say, Lord, I'm going to bloom where I'm planted. I want to go out from here. Holy Spirit, I ask right now to do what only you can do in relating us to Jesus, being our center and our source, our beginning and our ending, our all. There's a verse in the Bible, I believe it's Isaiah chapter 1 and probably verse 18. He says, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. People want to find another pathway to promotion. But promotion doesn't come from the south or the east or the west. It comes from the Lord of the north. God is the one who brings promotion. God, God can look at all sorts of people with their abilities and talents and skills and, and all of those things. But it's the person who's willing to allow the sword of God's work, uh, work uh, to move in their life where they're separated soul and spirit. Their spirit man is strengthened to guide. Father, we ask that you would move, move, move in the auditorium right now. Move in the auditorium right now. Probably all of us have Jebusites. Let's get real. Probably all of us have Jebusites. We, we don't need to respond to that. We ask, Lord, let the Jebusites experience a defeat today allow us to climb the water shaft for our promotion to walk as you want us to be do this we pray Holy Spirit do this we pray right now in this moment that no person would be discouraged in climbing the water shaft that no person would have a base that's not secured and established in Jesus Christ and who He is. And let there be an extension of your kingdom from this time onward. In people's lives, homes, business, schools, city, province, country, countries. Let it be so, Lord. Let it be so, Lord. Use us in our own unique ways as you've designed. In Jesus' name. Just with every head bowed and every eye closed. How many are here this morning you say, I've got things in my life I need forgiven of. I'm willing to turn from my sin. I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I've never been conquered by the Lord. I've conquered other people and I've done lots of great things, but I've never let the Lord come into my life and first. You want forgiveness of sin? You want to pray a prayer of salvation? Put your hand up right now. Hold it up high. You say, I want the Lord this morning. I want Jesus in my life.
just hold it up high in the middle section I see your hand another person middle section I see your hand over there I see another couple of hands over here over my right side I see a hand over there anyone else do you hold your hand up high whether you're in the balcony up in the balcony I see your hand up there way up in the top way up in the top another couple of people over there over in my left side yes sir I see your hand you can put it down anyone else you're saying yes to Jesus this is Old Testament language it's some of its figurative language but let me tell you it's for today 2016 it speaks right now in language that we understand anybody else you're saying yes to Jesus look at me please here's what I want us to do last Sunday we had a fire drill we we ended up fire drill we got some people coming to Jesus and then we went outside for our fire drill if you put your hand up last Sunday you might want to come up this Sunday if you didn't get your complimentary packet but here's what I want to do wherever you are in the auditorium I'm going to ask in just a moment that you come to the frontier and I want to pray with you right here and the reason that I ask that you move out of your seat you, if you come come with somebody nudge them say I don't want to walk up there alone I'm nervous just nudge them but I want I want you to step out and make a public commitment for Christ and I'm going to pray a prayer we're going to ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. If you, if you are in the balcony, I'll wait for you to come down. But I want you to move out now. We're going to ask our musicians to play. Just move out from where you are. Come. Come to Jesus. Don't hold back. All across the auditorium. That's right. Come, come. I'll tell you why I say this. Is you got a room filled with Christians. And if you can't do it here, it doesn't mean you can't do it out there, but it's not looking good. Because we want you to be bold, be strong, stand for your commitment. Move out now, please. Just come. Come on over here. Come. Just face this way. Come on right over here. That's right. Come on right over here. Come on over here. That's right. I want you to look this way. You don't need to see them. That's right. There were a number of people who raised their hands. This isn't about me. It's about you. I want you to win. It's decisive. I want to give you the opportunity. Maybe, maybe just turn to people beside you right now. By the way, you're, you're courageous. You're bold. God bless you. If you, don't, if you don't know the person, just turn to them and say, listen, was, did you put your hand up? Do you want to come? And then we're going to pray. Just all across the auditorium, be part of this. Others just pray. Turn to someone and ask them if they put their hand up. The rest of us pray. This is spiritual battle. And I want you to win. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless you. It'll change your life. God bless. I'm going to pray with you in just a moment. One person is enough. One person is enough. I want to thank you for responding to Jesus and I want to pray right here. I'm going to pray a prayer, a simple prayer, just repeat it after me. But from your heart,
from your heart and Jesus will come into your life you're like us we're like you we have to ask the Lord to wash it all away and he will out of courtesy let's pray with with these uh, individuals here Father I've sinned against you I've broken your laws and I'm being honest with you this morning I've gone my own way in the past and this morning I'm willing to stop and I give my life to you I put my trust in you alone you died on the cross for my sins you shed your blood for me wash all of my past sins away right now make me pure and holy right now just as though I've never sinned come and live in my body right now give me your grace and power to live for you I love you Jesus Establish your presence in my life. Establish your presence in my home. Establish your presence in this church. Establish your presence in my business. From this time onward, amen. If you need ministry that's extending from this service, just come to the front here and we have a prayer team that will minister to you, for you, for the rest of us. Make sure you sign up for Taste of the Nations so that you're not disappointed. Thank you for coming to the embassy. God bless you.